There was a time when resources seemed endless. But in 2030, the great energy crisis began. With hardly any resources left on our world, global powers created the World Space Agency to look beyond the Earth for answers. The answer was found in Helium-3, a powerful isotope discovered in abundance on the Moon. With it, humanity could satisfy its energy demand for decades to come. And so, in 2032, mankind colonized the Moon. Spearheaded by the Lunar Council, the WSA constructed several permanent settlements to harvest and process Helium-3. The resulting energy was transferred to Earth through a revolutionary energy network, the Microwave Power Transmission, or MPT. For a time, all seemed well. Then, one fateful night in 2054, the lights went out. No energy. The MPT had gone offline, and communication with the lunar colonists was lost. Without earthly resources to launch a full-scale rescue mission to the moon, the World Space Agency was shut down permanently in 2055. But a small group of former WSA colonists refused to accept humanity's bleak future. Determined to discover the colony's fate and to restore the MPT, they've been preparing their mission in an abandoned desert launch facility. Now, in 2059, they are ready to launch an astronaut to the moon. What awaits is unknown and unforeseen, but the mission is clear. Deliver us. The moon. Hey guys, John here, and welcome to Deliver Us the Moon Fortuna. About two and a half years ago, uh, the folks at Kyokan reached out to me to check out the demo for their game Deliver Us the Moon, which was being kickstarted at the time. I loved that demo. It was short, but it was awesome. Very immersive, very cool. Hit exactly what I was looking for in this sort of a game as far as the feel of being alone and kind of scared and just in this place, you know, where there was no other humanity except for you know what had been there before you and uh it was such a cool feeling and experience i was so excited for the game and then it did take a fair bit longer than they had anticipated and i had hoped but now the full game is available on steam uh, and coming soon for console i believe too uh, and uh, you should definitely check it out. It looks like it's going to be amazing, and I'm so excited to bring you this video. Now, whether or not this becomes a full LP, I don't know yet. That's going to be mostly up to you guys, and that's why I'm going to need you to destroy that like button and leave me a bunch of comments letting me know you want to see more of this. Uh, but I, for one, am very, very excited about this and uh, really looking forward to what lies ahead of us so yeah let's do this friends and family of the missing lunar colonists gather all around the world tonight in remembrance of the 2054 mpt blackout that resulted in a global power outage and the loss of contact with the lunar colonists the blackout caused global turmoil which ultimately led to the closure of the world space agency one year later in other news the recent formation of the largest dust storm on record has prompted climatologists to readjust their forecasts of the equatorial desert's growth rate. As a result of the new storm, the desert could soon cover 30% of the globe's landmass. Several governments have pledged support for refugees despite reports of resource shortages. The dust storm is expected to hit residential zones between the northern 49th and 50th latitude lines by late afternoon and pass over the World Space Agency's former MPT ground station in the Adirao Desert. Authorities have imposed a mandatory evacuation of the impacted areas. 
For countries north of the equatorial desert, temperatures are expected to be a mild 46 degrees Celsius. This was Nicole Sage for World News 1, September 6th. Christina, are you there? Wishing you a safe and happy day. Hmm. Are you talking to me? Is somebody talking to me? <laughs> What's this? Hmm. Okay. Somebody say something to me? Where's my radio? I mean, this is a radio, but... Music related. I feel like somebody said a name, which I assume was aimed at moi. Uh, zoom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it working yet? Interesting. We're ready to start the mission Ooh. to copy. Sure. Cool. Ground control to Fortuna One, this is Claire. Please confirm radio contact. Okay. Radio contact confirmed. Make your way to the launch platform and prime the rocket for liftoff. We have to launch before the dust storm hits. Okay. Hmm. That's really cool. I love that this has the look of a screen. Like, you know, you've got the, the clarity of the, the real world, but the, the screen itself... I don't know, it just has the feeling of like used, weathered, whatever green. That's that's cool. I like that. Alright, guessing we're gonna go outside. There he is, the tourist spy. It took us four years to get her ready for launch. But you need to hurry. The dust storm will hit this area in a few hours. If we don't succeed now, the Fortuna mission will be over for good. Okay. Whatever you say, Claire. Whatever you say. Whoop. Scan. Ah. T network dish. Mm hmm. Cool. to see over here oh. I will probably spend far too much time looking at things that aren't important but one of the things I loved the most about this game the last time I played it was the immersiveness and uh, I imagine that's not going to change it's a girl uh, mommy was in heaven, daddy was on the moon. Ah, uh, okay. Claire, got it. Oh, this was written by Isaac. Alright. Both Isaac and Kathy have not been seen since the blackout. Ah, so yeah. What we saw in the opening cutscene, the implications of what happened is pretty big. Interesting. Okay. Onward we go. I know she said we were a bit pressed for time, but I can't help but want to like look at everything. <laughs> Sputnik Monument to the stars. Cool. Guessing we're going up these stairs. Can't do that. Mm hmm. That's...
concerning. Hmm. So we're going to have to go up here. Let's see if we can fix this. Let's see. Sure, if I trust getting into this thing, but do it, I guess. Ted, I see you're on your way up to the facility. The control center is located on the top floor. There, you can prime the rocket for launch. All right. Whoa. transmission from the lunar colony. At first, no one believed it would be possible to transmit energy from the moon back to Earth. But the WSA proved the skeptics wrong. Just like you will, when you get the MPT back online. The idea... Flashlight, alright. Go up here quickly. Is there anything? Aha. Uh -huh. Power's out. Use code 3548 for the door. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. Glad I looked over there first. Yeah. Bit of light here. This building once functioned as part of the WSA, but it's been our home for many years now. I still can't believe we'll be leaving here for good soon. The desertification of this whole region won't take long after the storm passes through. Okay. Hmm. That's what we're here to find out. What happened? What can be done? Another reason that I, uh, I want to look at all the things is because, you know, these people have put a ton of work into this game, to the little details little touches and graphics and what have you and uh, I think it deserves some uh, some spotlight there you know oh I see that's what I was doing is uncovering this uh, Isaac Johnson uh. Let's see. okay Determined to seek the truth, if I could speak English, about the 2054 blackout and restored connection. Maria Gonzalez has raised Fortuna team from the. Is it Fortuna or Fortuna? Fortuna. Fortuna, I think is what it is. I think I said it right the first time. Knowing me, I probably didn't. Alright, anyway. Not here. Okay. Ah. Uh, Memoriam, indeed. Nothing else to say. Oh, yeah, there is something to say. Oh, I can just interact with it. Whee! <laughs> and the achievement, you spin me right around. Lol. Lol. Alright. 
Ouais. Moving on. Ouh, there we go. Few survivors malfunction. Maria brought her damage unit back to Earth with her. She's been trying to repair Razzy in hopes of restoring holographic recording captured by the device during her time. The Huygens Hugh Huin Huin's I don't know. Research facility. I'm bad with names and everything. Uh, dear Sarah, we met years ago on the Pearson Space Station. Leave from service. Right away in your graphics, Hogger. I hope you can help me out. Okay, so are we Sarah? Or no, we're Maria? I'm not sure, actually. Are we any of these people? Who knows? Maybe we'll find out at some point. Memoriam. Don't forget everyone we've lost that day. Yeah. Indeed. Hmm? Fluoxetine antidepressants. Oh. Interesting. Sec. Getting a really bad lag spike whenever I move the camera back and forth right there. We'll ignore that and move on. Oh. Hmm. What am I gonna get in here? Ah. Can grab and move things. Nice. Look over here real quick, make sure we're not missing anything that we could uh, scan or check. Yeah, there's something about looking that, well, not every time, but certain times looking over there seems to cause a bit of issue. It's okay. Uh-huh. Going on in here. Hmm, at the mess hall here. I can interact with. Do, 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 do. Duh. Should notice. Okay. Just being thorough. <laughs> what the frick? Hmm. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so, what's going on here? Going to do it. 
That's all we have to focus on. Go over your notes. Join us when you're ready. All right. Okay. Interesting. So we're going to get more of the story as we go through these audio clips as well, I would assume. Interesting. Cambridge University. Claire e. Johansson. Magna Cum Laude in Astronautics. Cool. Ooh. Hello. There's rocket model. Recruited straight out of university, Claire Johansson designed the Taurus V rocket for the Fortuna mission. Claire was eager to join the team to uncover the fates of her father and sister on the moon after the 2054 blackout. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Isaac Johansson, his next kin, has been granted full custody over Kathy Christina Johansson after the mother Elizabeth Johansson's untimely death as her current guardian, your ordained to ensure that Kathy is brought for safe passage to the moon to be reunited with her father. Hmm. That didn't turn out such a good idea, now did it? Mm -hmm. Poking around everywhere. Whoop. Control center, crew quarters, all right. We know what those are, so let's go to the control center. Good, you're in the control center. Get the rocket ready to launch as fast as possible. Okay. Initiate power reboot. Okay. What else I need to see here? Close both fuel valves. Okay. Uh oh. That is not what... Oh, the key would be starting. We need to close, whoops, close the fuel valves first. I'm guessing I don't do that from in here, judging by what I see out there. Gotta go over here and do this manually, I assume. Yeah. Oof, the storm is starting to kick up. We should probably hurry. find one of those ladders down here. Actually, is this the room I was in with that? Aha, the one I moved. Ugh. Also the room with the lag spike. All right. <laughs> That's cool though. I was just thinking, I wonder if there's some way to get back to 
where I had seen that. And there you have it. Good game design. Good callback. Okay. Yep. We're good to go. Got time limit. <laughs> go, go, go. Whoa, hello, Max Mike. For those wondering, I turned the graphics down from epic to high. Didn't seem to have any effect on that, so I'm guessing it's it's a little bit of a optimization thing. This music is epic! Hurry. What are you waiting for? We have to launch before it's too late! Working on it. to retract orbital access arm. Uh, cut off when in the resting position. Okay. Orbital access arm retracting. Perfect, just like with practice. Okay. Oops. Wait, what did I do wrong? Oh, A1, A3, B3, B4. I should look at what's on the screen. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Oh, okay. Indeed. Initiate hydrogen burn off. Ignition. Rocket boosters, ignition start. Engines ready in five, four, three, two, start. One. We have lift off. Crap. It's happening. Oh, man.
was so freaking epic. <laughs> the moon complete the second stage of the launch sequence okay cut off main engine whoops go night second stage thruster ready for ignition Deliver us the moon. 